everyone, and welcome to the seventh session of Tokyo Red. Uh, Tokyo Red, if you're unfamiliar, is a continuing Cyberpunk Red campaign set in Tokyo rather than in Night City. Cyberpunk Red is a uh, tabletop role-playing game that is set is the set in the same setting and universe as the anticipated uh, Cyberpunk 2077 video game and the old uh, Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop role-playing game, just in the year 2050. Uh, we've already had six successful sessions where we've covered missions both found in the Jumpstart and in uh, Homebrew. Today's session is going to be a little bit of a bottle episode, which means we might have a shorter session depending on how things work out. Uh, I do have a little bit of shilling before we get to that, though. Uh, you probably have heard this if you've been uh, tuning in for a while. Uh, right now, streaming and Patreon are sort of my primary sources of income while I'm searching for a new job. That means whatever support you can provide, whether it's a follow, sub, patron, donation, whatever, uh, it's all greatly appreciated. Just make sure to take care of yourselves first. Uh, with that out of the way, we can get to the good stuff. And you know where this part of my monologue is going, is we already have a tradition in this group that we start each session with some form of current event monologue. <laughs> And today's session is pretty much going to do the same thing, but it's also going to start a little bit differently. But let's see the screen sheet for today uh, before I give any other hints. So, switch us over to the screen sheet. And McCall, if you could take it away. All right. Japan today. Strange messages appear in data-wide terms citywide. The Tokyo Metropolitan Police are working overtime to discover the cause behind strange messages appearing on data terms across the city. At first, the messages were relatively benign. A few replaced words here, a few emoticons there. Now, however, they have escalated into full-on manifestos by a clearly deranged individual. Whoever they are, they have threatened to bring the city to its knees should Prime Minister Masuda not repeal what they view as draconian weapons control laws. The Prime Minister has only made a brief statement on this matter. Uh, promising that he will, that he and the rest of the ministries will not allow such threats to shape policy. It is important for the public to know the nature of these threats should be the TPMD. Ah, ah, my apologies. It is important for these people, for the people to know the nature of these threats should the TPMD not find the culprit soon. In particular, public <laughs> error, unexpected, end of file. I know you can see this, Masuda. I'm done playing games. You have 24 hours to comply, or the first will die. The time of reckoning is at hand. <laughs> I don't know if the, the ominous laugh there was in the scream sheet, but I like it all the same. All right. Oh, no, th th that, that's the uh, that's that mask emoticon. Uh-huh. All right, so uh, today's session, if the scream sheet wasn't an obvious enough indicator, we're going to start a little bit differently. And what that means is instead of, you know, doing the apartment thing, um, what I'm going to say is the last thing that our edge runners remember is you all peacefully went off to bed. However, when you start to come back to consciousness, you find yourselves in a different position. Uh, more specifically, you all find yourselves on a bus uh, that is tearing down one of the Tokyo Expressways. Uh, you are in whatever you were in bed with. So if you went to bed wearing just a nightgown or uh, just your boxers, you are literally whatever you went to bed in, that's what you have. Um, in addition, uh, you're not the only occupants of this bus. There does appear to be uh, a bus driver as well as 10 or so individuals uh, of varying uh, age uh, and uh, physical description. Now, I did not put 10 tokens on the map to represent the civilians, but if we need to keep track of a specific one outside of the bus driver, we can do that. Um, but the, the key thing here is, is that all of them are panicking. All of them are hypoventilating. They're freaking out, and you have no idea why, and that's where we're going to start. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that Shogun is not there. Uh, I forgot to remove him. So Shogun is not there. The rest of you are. All right. Uh, oh, first order of business. Can we see out the windows? You can. You can see that uh, you are going down a expressway. Uh, you're not really sure where uh, on the expressway you are specifically uh, until you see a sign uh, pass by. 
and you specifically, and this is probably going to go over uh, most of your heads, but I do it for flavor. Uh, you were on the uh, Chuku uh, Dobayashi exit. I hopefully said that right, and if not, I apologize. But basically, this confirms you are on the Tokyo Expressway. Tokyo Expressway. Um, can I do a knowledge local to figure out where we're... Uh, are we driving away from town, or... Oh, uh, yeah, if you town? could give me uh, local area knowledge. Okay. Or local expert, I think it's actually called. Okay. So I that would be... do the same. Yeah, anybody, uh, anybody who wants to roll local expert, feel free. I think Maca Wow. Okay. We're oh, starting oh. off today we with... We uh, Yeah. Okay. So you both together uh, put your heads together real quick and you compare notes. And they're actually very good notes. You paid attention in school. Um, so the way the Tokyo Expressway works is it's actually a sort of semi-circular loop around the uh, Ginza district of Chuku. I'm I'm sorry. I apologize if I'm butchering these names. Uh, but basically what it means is that you could conceivably stay on this expressway going in a loop um, for potentially uh, a unlimited amount of time. Um, it's approximately uh, two kilometers in length. Um, so you get around it pretty quickly. Um, there are exits to greater uh, expressways. If you really wanted to, you could go all the way to Nagioa on the Tomei Expressway, but that would be a, about a 200-mile journey uh, or a 325-kilometer journey uh, if you wanted to do so. Uh, but that's where you kind of are right now. And for sake of argument, I'm also going to say that you know that uh, all of the expressways in Japan uh, generally require a toll, uh, and it, there's a specified rate per uh, kilometer um, because you guys succeeded so well. Uh, you guys know that it's about 70 yen per kilometer, uh, if it matters. Okay. And, and you said we are wearing whatever we were wearing when we went to bed? Correct. So none of us probably have wallets. Yeah, I was going to say, none of you have Definitely wallets. No wallets, no weapons, aside from ones that are implanted into you specifically. And I <laughs> don't have my glasses, which is the thing I use to net run. So the, the obvious okay, question is... Which of us is sleeping naked? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I would actually, I, I Steel would actually would, would have would have slept in her body weight suit still because that's all she has. All right, well you've got something I, going for you. Airbags is probably in shirt and shorts, and that's about it. Okay. Right. I'll um, say I'm in a pair of boxers. Uh, Enzo's probably wearing some nice, yeah, silk pajama pants, like nice full length, mm -hmm. but topless. And you're probably surprised by the amount of scarring over his upper body, as well as the full extent of the limbs that are robotic. So I think Airbag is going to sort of look up and down and go, oddly enough, I don't think I've had this exact nightmare before. Yeah, well, wait, what the... Uh, hello? And I just, like, panicked. I just go over to the nearest other person. Like, wh where are we? And uh, we'll say for a second argument, uh, it's an elderly woman that uh, is next to you or nearest to you, and she says... Oh, dearie, I was wondering if you ever were going to awake. Um, I, we're, we're not sure. We, we just know that uh, the, the, the bus driver has, has told us to stay calm and, and, and not to panic. Of course, he's, he has had the opposite effect. Right. Do we have our uh, stuff? Um, I'd imagine not. Yeah, I was going to say, the only things you have are things that are cyber implanted into you. Um, so, yeah. I'm with... guessing the... Uh... Upgrades to security of our building. Yeah, Fail. but uh, even though Steel is most fully clothed, Steel fe feels the most naked without her cyber deck and uh, cyber like mm -hmm. gear that actually net run at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I think Airbags is going to sort of make his way up to the driver's seat and go, so uh, you look like you've probably got the most answers out of everyone. Oh, God. Uh, oh, oh, you're one of the passengers. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, my name is Jensen. Uh, this is my first day on the job. And uh, I think we're in a hostage situation. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, you wouldn't be the hostage taker, uh, based on that. Uh, no, sir. I'm just your average bus driver. I wouldn't even know where to begin. 
Q for C2. So what are we we talking like a bomb under the accelerator or he uh, actually hands you a scream sheet and uh, on mm -hmm. the scream sheet it's the same message that you guys saw before that McCall read off. However, you know how that section that said the time of reckoning is at hand? Um, that mm -hmm. has been replaced with a important read the following. And it's literally the movie speed. You must maintain 50 miles an hour. If you go any higher or any lower, the bomb that is on the bus will explode. If anyone tries to get off the bus, the bomb will be detonated manually. And I think that's everything. That is on the screen sheet. Yeah, so I'll sort of. Uh -huh, uh -huh, right, right. Wait. Wait here, I'm going to go talk to some friends. I'll, I'll be here. Thankfully, it's uh, not a whole lot of people on the expressway today. What time of day is it? Uh, it's about mid afternoon. Okay, so yeah. rush hour traffic is going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. Fun. We don't Alrighty. So, who's up for some impromptu bus jacking? Oh. Well, I do think you'd probably be the best person to drive, other than... Well, oh, see, that's the thing, yeah. The driving isn't the, so much the problem. The problem is, we've got to figure out where the explosives on this thing are. And it's like, he's like sort of trying to top. keep it down so that the other passengers don't hear this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And either bypass them or di or disable them. Right now, now, unfortunately, they uh, took away Steele's cyber deck, uh, probably because she would have just been able to hack the bombs. But uh, we may be able to hardwire this if I can figure out where the wiring on this bus is. If this is a hostage and... situation, they probably, not to metagame too much, but they probably have something rigged up to detect speedometer, which might also determine yeah. what the bomb is being tampered with. Yeah, according to the instructions, it's maintain a set speed, and any attempt to, was it any attempt to leave the bus or leave the motorway? Uh, leave the bus. Alright, so it was uh, maintain a set speed and anything... Any attempt to leave the bus, they'll set it off manually. How would they know if they left the bus? They didn't. My thought exactly. Oops. So, first, they probably first, wait first, 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 where's the security system on this bus? They usually yeah. have them. That so, was my thought exactly. And I start looking around to see if I can find like security cameras or anything. Yeah, if uh, anyone who's looking, if you could give me a perception, please. Steel is just like sitting in one of the chairs, just hands on her head. Just, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm useless here, guys. I. Oh, uh, don't give up yet. We might need your help recoding stuff. All right. So I'm gonna say, uh, best roll here is a 17. Uh, airbags. Yes, you are noticing that there are these tiny little red lights that are blinking in the corners of the bus. And it doesn't take you long to go up and inspect one. And sure enough, there's like these little pinhole type cameras that are feeding live feed of the bus to somewhere. Hmm. Okay, so they can see everything we're doing. So we will have to be a little bit careful about this. Um, now then, uh, based on his... A pro his general knowledge of vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, where would where on the bus would like they generally have an access panel to get to the electronics? I would say, or would, they, or would that be a case of that wouldn't be accessible from inside the bus? I think it would be accessible. The question is, is would you know where it is on this model? Um, let's mm. do a roll of it. Uh, I would say, what is your education? Uh, not too great. Uh, okay. Two. Two. What is your driving? Seven. Seven. I'll let you do a driving, even though it's based on reflex, because um, driving, I think, definitely applies here. All right. So uh, there's 17. there's seven or not seven. There's several ways you can get at different parts of the bus. Um, there is the front panel, 
uh, up near where Jensen, the bus driver, is, and that will get you into uh, the dashboard, uh, the speedometer, things of that nature. Um, you do know that on this style of bus, if you find a way to get the flooring up, uh, there are access points to allow you to get to the cargo that's underneath. Like, this is a Greyhound-style bus, so it is raised up a little bit. Um, but there are panels underneath the carpeting that could allow you access to the cargo compartments. And then there is, near the back of the bus, where the restroom would be, um, there is another access point that would get you... Um, pretty close to where the actual engine and things of that nature are. Alrighty. Uh, I think airbags is going to go, hey, uh, you guys reckon you can screen me from the security cameras while I get into the cargo bay? I look at Akari. We can try. Hi. Yeah. Um, I'm going to head to the front of the bus, mm -hmm. um, standing or physically standing in front of one of the security cameras and looking over Jensen. Mm -hmm. And I go, right. Most buses have a emergency dispatch radio. Where's yours? Uh, it's, it's over there. Any points? I I've tried it a few times. I haven't gotten anything though. Well, I'll see what I can figure out. I'll pull it up. I'll go and grab it and just hello. Hello. Is this thing on? So you don't even get static, which would indicate that you're not even transmitting. Right. Probably power. Um, basic tech to ensure the radio's functionality? Yep. You read my mind. 21. Yeah, sure enough. Uh, you're pretty sure that uh, whoever did all of this to the bus uh, disconnected the power from the radio. Right. All right, then I will attempt to reconnect the radio to the power, the bus's power supply while maintaining the connection or while blocking the security cameras. All right, go ahead and roll me another basic tech. You can do, I can do that. 19, yes, you are able to reconnect. And sure enough, the moment uh, the, the radio sparks to life, uh, there is a uh, flurry of, of dispatches that are trying to get a hold of Bus 21, which you're guessing by the 21 painted above the door, is your bus. Mm. This is Officer Ikari Minato of the TCPMD. Whatever. Um, identification number, whatever. Patch through to emergency dispatch immediately. No, yes, I'm aware that this bus is currently going about 40 kilometers faster than it should. Yes, I'm aware that we missed about 20 stops. And... Uh... The uh, woman on the other end very quickly reroutes your call. And uh, probably to your relief, the other person on the end picks up this time. And there's no, uh, no other than Chief Cabarillo. And uh, the chief says, all right, Akari, what the hell's going on? We have a bus that is quite literally exceeding the, the speed limit and tearing around the, speed, the expressway on Tokyo. I, I have news organization up my ass. What the hell's going on? Okay. Um, myself and my apart my flatmates were kidnapped while we slept and were placed on this bus. Uh, we are currently along with about ten other civilians. Yep, there are ten other civilians with us, uh, including a bus driver who is having a very first, a very interesting first day on the job. Uh, we are this bus is rigged to explode. This is the manifesto as read, and I'll give her the details, of course. Mm. Well, uh, you do hear her curse uh, several times, in fact. And uh, when she stops cursing, she says, ah, we were worried that he would escalate or they would escalate, whoever the hell they are. Uh, they, they were going to escalate like this. Uh, it's good news, bad news. Good news. Uh, if you make it out of this alive, we know who we're going after next. Bad news. I immediately, nothing comes to mind uh, to get you out of the situation. If we cannot evacuate you from the bus then I think the only option here is you're going to either have to find a way to dismantle the bomb or you're going to have to get somewhere where we can get someone onto the bus to then dismantle it there. Acknowledged. We are investigating the security systems and will uh, will alert you as we have ideas. Recommend you have a gyro on standby with an expert or evacuation team, whichever comes first. Understood. And uh, I would simply point out the time, Akari. 
you've got about maybe 30 minutes before the rush hour hits. And even with a police escort, you're going to be in trouble. Duly noted. Thanks, Chief. We'll check in every 10 mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah. All Speaking right. of, mm-hmm. huddle up, guys. Uh, Let's talk this through. Yeah. Yep. So um, once airbags is uh, convinced that everyone's like, screening him off from the cameras well enough mm-hmm. yeah he's gonna like get down to like sort of tapping his heel on the floor to figure out oh yep yeah, that's where the access panel is mm-hmm. and then sort of w- with a sort of finger to his lips for silence from the other passengers who are probably watching him by now mm-hmm. he will flick out the ripper claws and start cutting away the carpet to get to the access panel okay uh, go ahead and roll me some damage then. Uh, just your standard uh, ripper damage. Yep. Uh, how much is that again? I think it's 2d6. It's 2d6. All right. Seven. Seven's more than enough. Yeah, you were able to uh, carve away the carpet very easily. And yeah, sure enough, there is an access hatch that could be used to get into the cargo compartment. Alrighty, uh, might need someone's help once I figure out where the wiring is, but uh, in the meantime, wish me luck, and he'll sort of wriggle into the cargo compartment. Okay. Can I look at the cameras to tell, would they, do I know at all if these cameras would also have audio recording at all with them? Uh, roll me a tech on that, and we'll find out. In 18... Uh, you're pretty sure that these are probably your standard store-bought cameras. Um, they are not super fancy. Um, so if they are picking up any audio, it's probably not anything major. So whispering's probably okay, but if you like start going on a, you know, a Hamlet monologue, it'll pick up that. Well, there goes my next idea as a fil- for a filibuster. <laughs> Deal. I mean, um, that could come in handy if we need a distraction. Mm-hmm. Still, from, from looking at the cameras, I whisper, can you tell which one will give us the biggest blind spot if we take it out? Uh, yeah, how many cameras are there in total? Uh, there are four. There's one at each corner of the bus, and I guess I can mark it with, uh, with an actual shape here. So there's one here. There's one there. There's one there. And there's one there. And where is the axe? Yeah, like, we wanted to like it. shield the axe port, and where airbags is, which camera would be the best to take out? To... Yeah, uh, the access port will draw in green here. Uh, the access is that green circle there, right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Say, of course, right in the center. But yeah, uh, the good news, though, is that, uh, by the, you know, when airbags gets into the cargo compartment, the bus doesn't explode. Uh, so airbags, you're down here into the cargo department. It is pitch dark. Uh, do you have anything on your person uh, that would help illuminate this situation? I have a cyber eye. Ooh, that's right. Does it give you low light vision? It does. Well, then you can see moderately well. Uh, you see the standard uh, trappings of uh, people who would be on a Greyhound bus, so big old duffel bags, maybe some backpacks, things of that nature. Uh, but what you're also seeing are these very large blocks of C4, and there's mm-hmm. four of them in a series array. And you can see very ominously that uh, they are t- wired not only into the bus's systems, but into a manual timer. And the timer currently is ticking down from 45 minutes. Now, I would say this is 45 minutes of actual real-life time. So if by (laughs) 3.20 whatever, you have not decided or found a way to stop this, it's going off. Mm -hmm. That's always... uh, I'm so gonna, yeah. Steel's gonna start digging through all the bags and stuff in the cargo to see if there's anything useful in there. Okay. Yep. Uh, I mean, just... Maybe a, a pad that can hook into the net and like get some hacking tools on it. Okay. I would say uh, you are able to either find an agent or requisition it from one of the passengers. 
which would allow you to do basic net running stuff, but it's not like fully involved net running. Yeah, I can still, I still have my own plugs. I just don't have any programs, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would That's be going so, uh, in programless. Next thing I think is um, sort of just confirm that, yep, these things are wired in. Well, first of all, check that, yes, it's wired into this bus's speedometer, but mm -hmm. also that it's only wired into the speedometer. Like, it's not, like, checking, like, the indicators or the transmission or anything else like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's confirm that with uh, another basic tech roll, I think, would work here. Alrighty. And I don't really have any bonuses for that, so I will dump four luck into boosting that. Alrighty. That is 13. 13. Unfortunately, uh, with a 13, you're not able to confirm. I mean, your, your best guess is that it's just tied into the speedometer and the timer, but uh, you're not able to safely and like 100% confirm that that is the case. Hmm. It is at this point, as you're figuring that out, uh, that Xavier and Enzo... Uh, some of the passengers are starting to uh, truly panic, and uh, one of them in particular, uh, a teenage boy by the look of him, uh, he's trying to stand up and rush the front door. So how, if at all, would you two stop him from doing so? I'm going to stand in the aisle way. Stand in the aisle way? Okay. Uh, I would like you to roll me a brawling, please. 14. Let's see what Mr. Teenager rolls. Oh, dear. Oh. So that is going to be a 16, which is enough to beat you, unfortunately. So, Xavier, uh, this troubled teen literally bowls over you and gets to the front door and is frantically trying to get the door open. And Jensen, of course, is like, you know, looking over like, the hell are you doing? You'll kill us all. Uh, but the teenager does not seem to be in the right state of mind. Dash to uh, the front and just yank him away. Okay. I need you to roll me a brawling, please. Probably not. 23? Wow. I, I think unless he double crits here, you got it. Yeah, you fine. So you're able to get an arm around his neck or maybe around him in general and just pull him back. And he's like, no, 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 I gotta get out. I gotta get out. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Claustrophobic. Can't breathe. It's... I want to slap him, kind of like the, the hysterical thing, but metal fist, probably not good. I... Okay, yeah, Steel will go over and just, it, it, everything will be fine, we got this, we're, we're gonna work on it, and I'm just like, just be able to try and soothe him. Okay, uh, let's call that a conversation. Where is conversation? There it is. Oh, plus zero, let's go. An 11. Uh, I would say that uh, you're not really making any big progress, but what really catches your attention is he says, Inhaler, I need my inhaler. I will go dig through the bags to try and find it. Okay, uh, roll me a first aid, please. <clears throat> yeah, you find it pretty nice. easily. Nice. Um, also in the process, as you find what you're assuming is his bag... Uh, in his bag is a loaded uh, 9mm pistol, so a heavy pistol. Mm. I'm going to pocket that as well. Now, I will remind you that uh, in Tokyo and in Japan in general, uh, the ownership of a firearm is a big deal. Uh, really, the only reason you all uh, have access to it is because you're edge runners and or literally working for the police. So the fact that some random teen has a handgun might be setting off some warning bells. Yeah, I, I pocket it. I'm just gonna go over to him, give him his, give him in, his inhaler, and like, without trying to not have anyone else see it, I'll just like kind of flash it at him. Like, we're gonna have a discussion after. Okay. So I guess I I, I move to the remain at the front of the bus and turn to face everyone and growl mm -hmm. and be like, "All right, listen up. My name is Enzo." Officer Enzo, I'm a police officer. The situation is being handled. We're going to do everything we can to get this bus 
stop this bus and get you home safely. But we just need you to remain calm and in your seats. Let's have you roll a persuasion, and I'll give you a plus three bonus on it. All right. I think one point of luck in this, because I don't have a lot of luck. My persuasion. I thought I for sure I had it. 19. Very yeah, nice. Not bad. Uh, yeah, the uh, the other passengers start to, you know, I, they're they're very wary. They're kind of looking at each other, but they do start to settle down, you know, stop freaking out, things of that nature. Um, Jensen f- does also himself look a little bit more relaxed uh, until he points out at the front list, uh, boss, we got a Stay problem. Calm, Jensen. Everyone else, I want you to turn to the person beside you and tell them how you got in the bus and what you're going to do when you get off. And then I turn to Jensen. What's up? He just points out the front window, and uh, you see in front of you uh, that the uh, area on the expressway ahead of you uh, has been sort of partially cordoned off. Uh, Apparently there was a wreck uh, further up the road, and right now there's only one lane road, or one, you know, lane of the road that you could go down, and it's full of cars like it is not like fully you know backed up so that it's reflecting the rest of the expressway but there is a small blockade in front of you mm. well okay, can i say airbags has climbed yeah. back out of the cargo bay by now yeah you could you could yeah. be back up by now airbags yeah you're needed on it and as as he goes past he'll say okay carry bomb bombs in the cargo bay looks like it's rigged up to the accelerometer see what you can do and airbags yeah. will come over and go, okay, Jensen, move over. Uh, uh, okay, I, I have my foot on the accelerator, though, so we got to be careful about this. Yep, so we sort of do the sort of the awkward hop over each other and switch over. Mm-hmm. So switch out with Jensen. Accelerate there. a little bit more. What yeah. should we, we can't accelerate. We have to keep it at... Have to keep it at yeah. 50, yep. Do we have a cruise control? Uh, no, you do not have a cruise nope. control. Buses generally don't need them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. this whole process, airbags. Yeah. I'd like you to roll me. Let's call this a. You know, I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you either athletics, or I'll give you maybe even an evasion here. Yeah. Uh, it's just gonna be just like that time we uh, had to outrun a Reaper gang from from L.A. to uh, Manhattan. That's a hell of a run. <laughs> Long run. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like we, yeah, we had to like do mid-drive refuelings. It was crazy. So, uh, speaking of, so first one you want? Uh, I would say just either the evasion or the uh, athletics, because this is just to see how well you, you know, switch off the pedal, kind of a thing. <clears throat> All right, let me see which of those I'm better at. Uh, let's go with the evasion. Okay. 21. 21. As you said, you are, this is, you've done this before. So you very dexterously uh, are able to switch off your foot for Jensen's and, you know, kind of switch places with him. And yeah, you take a seat in the nice comfy bus driver chair. And sure enough, you are seeing the same blockade I described before. All right. And he is now going to slalom a bus. Ooh. Okay. Uh, What is your intention here? Uh, basically, so it's a single lane with traffic on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there physically enough space for a bus to technically get past? There is, but you would be scraping against the side of the mid-lane divider. All right, I'm okay with that. So he's just going to start blaring the horn okay, to get everyone's attention, to get them moving out of the road. Mm-hmm. And he's just going to hug that mid lane curtain and squeeze through just thread the needle all right i need you to roll me a very important driving check here mm-hmm. Oop. and i think i will yeah this is probably going to be the hardest one i do so i will dump the other four points of luck into this okay 24 nice. is a 28 28 even. So yeah, uh, not only are you able to uh, sort of screen the bus past uh, this road closure, uh, but you do so without actually losing any speed. 
Uh, you, the rest of the bus, do feel the the side of it shudder and the screech of metal on concrete as uh, a little bit of pain is traded. But you have avoided this obstacle for the time being. Uh, however, I will simply remind you that the current expressway you're on is a loop, which means yep. unless you get onto a different expressway. You're just going to run back into the same problem probably right. in the next five, ten minutes. I'm going to. Yeah, now, they didn't actually finally. say we had to stay on the expressway in the note, right? Correct. All right, so Airbase is going to start trying to use his working knowledge of Tokyo that he's built up over the last few months to go, okay, what's an exit that I could conceivably go at high speed along and like basically loop around and join back up to the motorway on the other side of the blockage. Gotcha. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a local expert knowledge? <laughs> this could be interesting. That's a 10. A 10. Mm. Uh, you think that maybe if you got off on the Kobayashi 3... It might give you more room to work with, but really the problem is is that the inner loop that you're on right now is it handles most of Tokyo from what my research showed me. So it's one of those things where you're sort of on a tight loop and you'd have to slowly sort of spiral your, spiral your way out onto different expressways uh, in order to get mm -hmm. to, uh, say, like an airport or uh, a longer stretch of road. Actually, yeah, if we could get to an airport, that would work, because then we could just, like, go round and round in a loop on the airport. Mm -hmm. There is the like Tokyo the International Airport on the map of Tokyo we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, if the bomb does go off, we're not going to take out everyone else with us. Until a plane gets in the way. <laughs> eh, we All can right, deal with so that. It, so airbags is going to call back over to a car and say, "Hey, do you reckon? Do you reckon the chief can clear us a path to the to the international airport?" I'm just going to look at Enzo. Um, oh, uh, actually, I'm going to. Yeah, probably. Um, anyone got an agent? Yeah, I think uh, Steel found one already. I found one that was about to destroy it to use it for net running, but. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I'll give it to Ikari before I do that. Okay, just send a quick text to the chief uh, saying, got plan for bomb, heading to Tokyo Airport at, along this route. Please clear ASAP. Uh, we'll send pictures of bomb and we'll work with uh, demolitions expert shortly. So as soon as you send off that text, you actually get a call from uh, the chief. Okay. Um, I'm going to just put it to my ear and not put it on speaker. Okay. What's up? So I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that we have managed to clear you to get on the Tomei Expressway. Uh, and that'll give you about 300 kilometers to work with. However... Uh, the problem with that, in order to get there on your current route, you're going to have to basically drift the bus around three different exits. I just look at airbags, who's... and casts a bit of a side eye, go, Cool, we'll worry about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, do send pictures of the bomb as soon as possible. I have uh, the brightest and best minds of the demolition team. Uh, both on standby in a, and in a gyro headed in your direction. Excellent. Um, bit of an, uh, let's see, bit of an ask. Got a spare cyber deck in one of those gyros? We can certainly throw one in one, yes. Cool. Now we're hearing um, that, I'll, still, I'll say, and, uh, and goggles so I can actually see what I'm doing. And net goggles. Preferably models uh, XL4-3. Is that your current fashion? Oh, I use... It, it doesn't matter. Just something. Fine. Something. Cool. Um, and then I'm basically going to say... Sorry, Steel. I gotta steal this. That was a bad time for pun. What am I doing making puns at a time like this? And then I'm going to scamper down into the cargo bay and start 
um, relaying images through my uh, cyber image eye into the phone and sending them off to the expert. Okay. Um, while doing so... Airbags um, go back. Uh, these things usually have sunroofs. Maybe you can get it in through there. Uh, oh, um, by the way, then I'm going to shout, airbags, Tomei Expressway. That's a bit of a drive, and it's going to be a little bit hairpinny, but that's what they got cleared for us. Tomei Expressway, got it. Um, and then while brushing past Xavier and Enzo, I'm just going to whisper to them, guys, see if you can't get a read on this bus driver. Like, seriously, how did we end up in a bus and he doesn't seem to have an answer for that. I'm also going to take this time to, since my, my uh, the the knowledge of the cyber deck coming, I'm going to take this time to try and locate, if I can make a scan or check the site, try and find where a jack in point. Okay, yeah. Let's, ha let's have you handle that while uh, Enzo and Xavier decide if they're doing anything with Jensen. Yeah, I'd like to interrogate Jensen a little bit. Okay. Uh, Steel, you're not finding any obvious ports, but uh, there might be one down near where the, where the uh, bomb is. Yeah, I'll have to squeeze down there once uh, the car is done taking all the pictures. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Enzo and Xavier, uh, you're both going to approach Jensen? Sure. Okay. So Jensen, walk us through how we ended up on this bus in Pajama. Well, I mean, uh, there was a group of men. Uh, they uh, said that you all had passed out and needed a ride home, and I, I didn't really question it. And I would say both of you can roll me a human perception here. <clears throat> so, Enzo, you believe him. Savior, he's telling a half-truth. So I want to continue with... Where did you pick us all up at, then? Uh, back at the uh, Shibuya station, of course. Interesting. And where okay. was our final destination, according to that the gentleman? I was supposed to take you to the airport. And, of course, uh, you can roll another human perception if you so wish, but... It might be obvious that uh, the airport was not your final destination. When did you get this cream sheet? Uh, it was uh, handed to me before I left the terminal, actually. So how could you stop to pick us up if you were handed a cream sheet saying that the bus would explode? He actually just sort of points at the front panel of the bus and you see that it actually has a data terminal in it and it probably that's what printed the screen sheet. Interesting. Did it ever find strike you as strange that us dressed as this, and I point to myself in a pair of boxers, mm -hmm. we're going to the airport. I mean, it's my first day on the job. They told me I should expect very strange people. I just thought this was a thing. Did the people who dropped us off bring anyone else on or anything else? Uh, yeah. And he points at the teenager, who at this point has gotten his inhaler and is still not hyperventilating as much, but, you know, still very rapidly breathing in and out. So just he got on with us. Correct. Was he also unconscious? Uh, no, he uh, he was uh, working with the gentleman that carried you on board. I, I like to Enzo. We have another person we need to start talking to. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's. And as you're doing that, uh, airbags, it's time for your first drift. Uh, so I'm going to need you to roll me another driving, please. Yeah, just put the initial D in on the player and let's go. <laughs> Turn on the Eurobeat. That's a critical success. Critical success, wow. a 26. Nice. Very nice. So uh, with your 26, you are not only able to get the bus uh, fishtailing, but you do so in such a fashion 
that uh, whenever this shows up later on the, the evening news, you can look back on this moment and say, that was very fine form. I could not have done better in an even larger vehicle. Uh, you don't even trade paint with the barriers of the expressway as you very gracefully slide the bus around the curve and get on yep. a different expressway. Someone somewhere is very happy to have finally won the argument about whether a bus can do a handbrake turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, meanwhile, Akari, uh, you've been sending pictures and uh, the chief gets back on the horn with you and says, okay, uh, we have uh, Mr. Michelson here. Uh, he's a transplant from uh, Night City. Uh, he says he's seen this sort of bomb. You know what? Here, I'm just going to give you the phone. And uh, a different gentleman gets on the phone and says, uh, Hi, my name is Michelson. Uh, it looks like you're dealing with an RJ-45 bomb here. Uh, it has an ID-10T interface. Therefore, it should be fairly easy to disarm, but also very easy to set off. Well, that's a fantastic um, s series of things you just listed off. How do I... Get rid of it. Explosives were never my thing. Well, uh, you've got two options. Uh, if you've got anyone who can do a cyber attack, uh, you might be able to get in that way. Uh, however, it is worth noting that uh, if I were to make a bomb like this, and I don't mean that maliciously, but to go to all this trouble, they probably have some black ice or other attack programs just lying in wait for the first person to try. Probably. Uh, other than that, um, I mean, we'd be cutting it down to the wire and literally cutting the wire, uh, but we could do that method. I, Steel is just the annoying child, like an annoying uh, their parent, Akari, like, I, like, any ETA on the side? What are we looking at for the gyro? How far is it out? Uh, so actually, at that mention, uh, you all hear the roar of an engine from above. And if you were kind of to look up out of the window, you would see that uh, there is, in fact, a police gyro uh, maintaining position over the car or sorry, over the bus uh, high enough that, you know, it doesn't have to worry about street signs, but uh, it is up there. OK, now, did we establish that there was a skylight on this bus? Uh, there is not, unfortunately, which means one of you with uh, cyber enhancements is going to have to tear a hole. Or I can just shoot out a window. That's I'll tear a hole into oh. it. Tearing a hole will probably panic the passengers less than shooting out a window. Now, but... Shooting out a window will deafen the passengers. Mm -hmm. Especially in this enclosed space. Xavier, keep talking to the teen. Stand up, stand on a chair and punch a couple holes and okay. rip. Yeah, go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and roll me some damage on your rippers. <laughs> I'm only looking for like a six damage here, so... I'll say, yeah, and... Uh... Oh. So with a three, uh, you go to, you know, punch a hole or tear a hole, and you only get about halfway through. I'll go over to the cameras and be like, just for the record, we're not trying to leave. We just want to get on the roof for a nice view. Airbags? There's another scream sheet mm -hmm. printing. Uh, guys, I think that got their attention. And he's going to, like, pull it out and look at it. I'm going to punch another hole before he can read it. Okay. So as you uh, as you are punching the hole, and we'll say you go through this time, uh, airbags, the speed limit has doubled. You must now go 100 kilometers an hour. Which is so what I'm going to... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yep. So he's going to help... So he's going to yell over his shoulder, I changed the rules on us, everyone hold on, and slam his foot on the accelerator. All right, so what I'm going to say here is that you are going to take a minus four penalty on all future driving checks because <laughs> of the speed of the vehicle. Can I poke my I head I realized down? we were gaming the system. Mm -hmm. Can I poke my head in the cargo hold again to see if there's any, uh, jack, uh, any point to jack into it? Uh, there is, and in fact, it's blatantly obvious that there is a single plug right below the timer. Yeah, probably black iced. And I'll just point at it. We can do this the manual way or your way, Steel. What do you want? I 
if there's black ice, then I need to wait for the cyber deck first. Hopefully they are packing with some... If it's coming from the police, I hope that they're packing with some pretty high-end program. We'll find out. Yep. And... So, uh, through the hole that Enzo has punched, uh, a rope comes down. Uh, and uh, we'll say for sake of argument, Enzo, you get a hold of the rope, secure it. And you've more or less formed a tether with the gyro above. Um, while this is going on, though, let's go to Xavier. Xavier, how are you confronting the team? Um, going over and just general conversation at first of seeing what he was doing, mm -hmm. how to get on the bus, see if he'd let uh, let loose anything that shouldn't be divulged. Well, I mean, I, I okay, okay. Look, um, I was given a lot of money by this guy. Uh, I, I was to to keep you all from doing anything, but I, I've never held a, held a gun before. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but they said if I didn't do it, they'd kill my family. Uh oh, is he roboting or is that me? Uh, I haven't, I, I lost Scotty for a second, but he's back oh. now. Yep. Sorry. He's back now. Um, so I just think to myself, all right, hostage situation, and then ask the teen, where is your family? Uh, they're, uh, up near Akibara. Why? I, uh, yell down to Akari. We have a hostage situation for the team's family. <sighs> I just swear loudly. Right. Address of your family? Where? That gives you an address. Okay. Protect... Yo, Mr. Demolitions Man, we need a protective detail dispatched to yada yada yada. Yeah, I, I'll pass that information along immediately. But uh, the deck we sent you, it's very basic. We we didn't have time to scrounge up one of the uh, standard ones, so we just grabbed what we could. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to do anything too fancy. And uh, just so you all know, you've got 13 minutes remaining on that clock. Indeed. <laughs> So, uh, airbags, I need you to roll me another drift check here as you uh, go around yet another bend. Uh, this is going to be interesting because I'm all out of luck. Mm -hmm. Is that a minus four? Oh, hang on. Nope, oh, wrong one. Still, That's a 20. Nice. E even without it, you... Uh... It's, it's almost like this character's built for this. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with a 20, uh, I would say that uh, you are putting on a clinic that people will use in future uh, lessons, especially when it comes to new bus drivers, how to drift a bus <laughs> at 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, but uh, uh, the good news is that uh, as you, you keep it so steady through the drift, that steel, you look up and you see that coming down the rope is a package for you. It is a standard cyber deck. Uh, you do not know what programs are loaded onto it. It is just a cyber deck. It would require you to make an interface check on the cyber deck to see what it actually has. I will do that. Okay. Right. Um, as she's uh, putting it on, I'm. I tell Steel, Steel, you have five minutes, and then I cut a cable. I was. Uh, don't do it while I'm in it, but. Uh, I. It's either you get a massive headache, or bus people, or everyone dies. Take your pick. That's a negative two. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Ow. Yeah. Oh, ow. I'm going to say uh, you have no idea what is on the cyber deck, oh. and you did so in such a fashion that, let's say, you reset the cyber deck. So now it is just a blank cyber deck. No programs Dang. whatsoever. Dang, now that the police cyber decks have their own bespoke Linux system. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. This Who does put not... Microsoft Bob on this thing? <laughs> Ikari? Who, who programs I'm an gonna... operating system in Fortran? I Ikari. What? I'm going to try. But if it gets too close, then yes, you talk with the guy on the phone to try and figure out. Kind of... Right. Gotcha. And at this point, I'm basically ignoring Steel as she does her work, and I'm getting in the instructions from this guy on the other end of the agent. And okay. I will begin my net running. All right, so you spend one action to jack in, and immediately you're attacked by 
two hellhounds. Oh, boy. So I need you to roll me your interface, please. And I'll try to get this going as quickly as possible. If I've got to extend the real-life timer, uh, I will, because I want to keep it fair for you guys. All right, so the first one rolled an 8. The second one rolled a 12. So, yes, you dodge both, which means you have... What is your interface? 7. 7, which means I believe you have two more actions. Uh, Fuck it, no time to pathfind. I'll just immediately slide down to the next level. All right. uh, Assuming that there's nothing other than the hellhounds on this level. You have no idea. Well, let me say, I would say you do see that there is a password here, so you cannot slide. Okay, then first net action is to back door. And we're going to spend five, four life. Okay. Oh my god, these ones. Oh wow, a negative one. That's a three. (laughs) That's a three total. Oh wow. Uh, Yeah, you're not getting through that password. That password is staying strong. I hate everything about this. Mm. Can I just try again? You can try once more. Ah, This is not fun. One, two, three. We'll spend another... A 13. A 16. A 16 is enough that you are able to get past the password. And you see that there is, in fact... Uh, another level below you. But I'm stuck here because mm-hmm. I can't move down. Right? Yep, you cannot move down because, uh, well, if you wanted to deal with the uh, hellhounds, uh, you know, attacking you, you could do it. But uh, otherwise, we're going to go to, uh, let's say, Akari at this point. Akari, yes. um, I would like you to roll me a, let's call this a... Uh, edu- uh, I'm debating between education and tech here. I'm going to give you tech. Uh, just roll your basic tech to see how well you're understanding the instructions that Michelson is giving you. Okie dokie. Rolling basic tech. A 19. I mean, you know, you've dealt with many things in your career. Uh, I call it a career, but... Uh, You've dealt with many different types of equipment, and once Michelson explains to you the basic operations of a C4-type explosive, uh, you start to understand that, okay, yeah, uh, it's just a matter of cutting off the detonator from the timer, and then, you know, doing yada, yada, yada. Um, So you're ready to start clipping wires, but it's it's starting to come down to the moment. Uh, And it is at this point that airbags, I need another driving check, please. Right, moment of truth. Still a twenty. Sixteen. That's that. Still sixteen is more than enough. Uh, I will say though that because it is not a superhuman success, because if I remember the chart correctly, like a eighteen or higher is like superhuman type thing. Um, so I, this this bus is gonna need a complete refurbishment when we're done. Let's put it that way. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, totally. The, the the back end of the bus slams against the barrier a few times as you're drifting around the curve, yep. but you do maintain the like, uh, the speed limit. Gets to a you're... roundabout and sort of mounts it, and there's this like a brief moment of absolute terror where the bus goes up on two wheels, stays there for about three seconds before slamming back down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Still a very impressive maneuver. Uh, yeah. Like, okay. Oh, whoa, that was a rough one. <sighs> so, uh, no, uh, no action or visibly steel's not showing any progress visibly steel is borderline on a panic attack okay fine um sorry steel i am going to cut a wire okay now there's a red wire a yellow wire <laughs> can I, and a green I can wire still talk and stuff right i always yeah you can, I can still talk, talk in and space like i'm i'm give me a few more seconds you have 20 go all right, so in that 20 seconds, the Hellhounds are going to act because it is a fresh initiative order. Uh, their attack is an 8, so you're going to be rolling your interface. You need to be in an 11, and you need to be to 14. Just for the record, like, mathematically, if, if they both hit, they can both insta-kill. Mm-hmm. All right, Ooh. so the first one nice. you avoid... Nope. I think the second one hits you. One. All right. So this is going to do 3d6. 
So you take an immediate 11 damage to your brain as uh, the virtual hellhound, you know, snarls your name and bites into you. And uh, I also need to know uh, that if I remember correctly, uh, is this okay? No, they haven't added that. Um, Because I think it used to be that if you were bitten by a hellhound, like you caught fire. It's not like that in red (laughs) or it's not like Uh, that yet. In 2020, getting bit by a hellhound gave you a heart attack. Yeah. So it's not that bad. But yes, you do take one hit and you have three net actions. And I am not seriously wounded, just barely. First net action, slide. Okay, go ahead and roll me your slide. This so oh, fuck. I'm going to spend my last three luck on that one, because I need it. Okay. So, 15. Uh, one you avoid, the other comes oh. with you. No, I got a 15 total because I spent luck, thank God. Ah, okay, then they both, uh, both avoid, or both, you avoid both of them. I'm on a, the second floor, right? Mm-hmm. What is on the second floor? Uh, there's a file and nothing else. I will, uh, I will grab the file and I... So you're going to ID it? Yep. Okay, a 13. Uh, good news, bad news. You've ID'd the file. Uh, remember that little Oni-like symbol that uh, I showed on the screen sheet earlier? Yeah. It's just that symbol. That's all it God is. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. So you've got one more net action. So this is all like happening in three seconds. So I have some time. Uh, I'm going to use my last net action to finally just pathfind the lower. Okay. I see a that's critical success. Finally, <laughs> that's what I like to see. So there, <laughs> there, uh, there are three levels. So there's just one more level above you. Or below you, however you're imagining the elevator. Uh, but there's bad news. Not only is there multiple black ice on the next level, but there is a password that is a very high difficulty. How many black ice? Two. Do I know what? I'm going to say no. You do not know what kind of black ice, just that there are black ice. Okay. I'm just going to uh, overlook it, or uh, talk to Akari. I can do it. There's a chance that I will die. What's the time, or what's the limit on the bomb? What's Four the countdown minutes. on the bomb? Four minutes. If I, if I try to do this, there is a very high likelihood that I will die. One, if I cut the cables now? If you cut the cables now, they would have to be, they would have to jack out first, which is they could do because they're not currently being attacked, Um, but they would have to jack out and that would mean starting all over. Right. Okay. Go. All right, Steel, it looks like you've got another three net actions and then we're going to go to Enzo, Xavier, and Airbags. I don't know, can can I, I don't know really, can I cloak past black ice, is that a thing? Um, I'm pretty sure cloak is only to uh, hide the trace of any viruses you're leaving in the system, so no. Damn. I know I'm out of luck points, but I'm feeling lucky, we're gonna go down to the next floor. Alright, you go down to the next floor, and I need you to roll me your interface please. This has the potential to end terribly. Mm-hmm. This has the potential to insta kill me. All right, one of them is going to manage to attack you right away. So this is going to do another three d six damage. Uh, does an ele- another eleven damage directly to your brain. Okay, good news. I'm still alive. Bad news. I'm on three hit points. Mm-hmm. Ugh. So just remember your modifier as you're rolling. Uh, but yep. you you still have your three net actions, because moving between levels, unless it's a slide, is a free action. Yeah, so Akari, you see there is just blood starting to pour out of Steel's ears and nose. Uh, net action, try and backdoor the password. Okay. If this fails, I am just... 13. 13 isn't enough, unfortunately. Fuck it, I am using my last nut action to jack out. 
Okay, you jack out, you pull out, you pull your hand back, or I forget what your interface plug is, but you pull it out uh, and just look at Akari and give him that look. Right, and then I'm just going to start following the instructions that the person gave me on the phone. All right, so I'm going to say uh, this is going to be another basic tech. However, because you are unfamiliar with this procedure, I am giving you a minus four penalty. Hey, fun. Okay, so minus four. Use that luck. Yeah, I do have luck. What is my luck count? I have luck of five. I'm going to spend... I'll spend four luck to cancel out that minus four. Okay. So just make that a zero penalty 25 <laughs> you do masterfully uh if this was uh anything else that someone looking at you might think that you've actually gone to bomb school um but uh yeah you snip the wires right as michaelson tells you to and sure enough the timer deactivates uh and you sort of breathe a sigh of relief um and it is at this point that michaelson says Okay, so, good news. You've disarmed the bomb. However, uh, probably, a, it, again, if I were doing this, I'd put another failsafe on it. You've got about maybe 30 seconds before if a failsafe kicks in to get rid of that bomb. Okay, um, so, uh, so... Does Akari relay this info? One split second while I ask Time for a couple of seconds. Yeah. Um, are we on the Tomei Speedway? Uh, at this point, you are, yes. Cool. Okay. Um, sweet. Do you want to just, and feels like coughing up blood, just want to just throw it out the window? Well, we're in the cargo compartment. Um, now, from what I remember from buses, there are emergency latches that will open the cargo compartments from the inside. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to fumble and find that, and then I'm just going to push the C4 out the side of the bus. Okay. So you do find a, a way to get the cargo doors open, and those of you up in the upper part of the bus do see the doors kind of come up next to the windows. Uh, however, when you go to start trying moving the C4, uh, your strength is not enough. You're going to need some help on this one. I'm panic shouting for Enzo at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess I wriggle into the, the very tight space. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll slop my way out nearly dead, just lay on the ground. <laughs> All right, use, those, use those legs and push these things out of here. Yeah. So Enzo, right. uh, tell me, uh, what, is, what is higher for you, in athletics or a brawling? Good question. I believe my athletics is higher. Yes. I will give you an athletics then. Yes, yeah, so I guess I brace my back against the wall, put my legs out, and use my jump legs to basically kick them out. Okay. Spending any luck? Ooh. No. Ooh. So, uh, bad news. The uh, C4 isn't budging. Apparently, whoever designed this thing... Uh, has cemented them somehow to the floor of the cargo compartment, and your first attempt uh, is not successful. Now, what I would say is you can try again. However, there is going to be a penalty. Well, let's say, oh, let's do it this way. There will either be a penalty of minus four, or you can take three times as long and risk the failsafe if there is one going off. It's in here with glue or something. Well, push it harder. Do you guys need help down there? Xavier. I'm going to take the rippers out. Okay. And just kind of like carve a, kind of like a crescent around it, like through the floor around it. See if I can like. Oh, I like it. I like the it. the C4 out with part of the, the flooring. I like it. Go ahead and roll me a, let's call this... Uh, now, I really hope they aren't going to take all these damages out of Jensen's pay. <laughs> they probably are. Uh, go ahead and roll me your Ripper Claws here. Damage? Five damage. I'm going to say you're able to get half the floor uh, carved out by the time that Akari, you're beginning to hear a very high-pitched whine, and so are you, Xavier. All right. It's now or never. Brace myself again. 
Another hard kick. Can I assist somehow? Uh, I would say yes, you could assist. Uh, what I would say is that uh, the overall penalty here would be a minus three instead of a minus four, though. Cool. I'm going to move all the passengers to the back of the bus as kind of as far away as from the blast as I can make them. Okay. All right. I'm going to um, put in the rest of my luck. So that's a plus four. Okay. Fifteen. So, well, 19. let me see. Nineteen, actually. Um, so, yes, with that, you are able to kick uh, the part of the flooring that contains the bomb out onto the expressway and not a moment too soon because you rocket past it and uh, moments later you feel and hear the shockwave of an explosion as it detonates on the expressway. I just look at Enzo, look at him with his shirt off and like, I owe you a drink after this is all done. And airbags will just sort of like pump a fist in the air and go, Whoa! Best weekend ever! <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday! Steel is lying on the floor, passed out with a pool of blood around her head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does one treat a uh, mentally burned out person, or is that just something that recovers over time? Uh, something over time, unfortunately. All right. Well. You know, make her comfortable with whatever happens to be in these passengers' uh, tote bags. Okay. And call an ambulance. Mm -hmm. So airbags, you can probably stop going 100 kilometers an hour now if you really wanted to. Yeah, yeah but no. you want to? Yeah, he, he, he'll just sort of like ease off the acceleration and just coast the bus to a stop. Okay. So you managed to actually, because I find it funny, you bring the bus to a stop just before it would collide with a gridlock in front of you. And mm -hmm. he, it, because I find it humorously, the moment you come to a stop, uh, three more cars pull up behind you and begin honking their horn at you. <laughs> Obviously sort of pulled on after the explosion happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and j j just for a cherry on top, there's a psh as the radiator on the bus finally gives up the ghost <laughs> oh. oh so long story short uh the gyro above uh does uh disgorge uh several members of the tmpd uh they take uh pretty much everyone into either protective custody or actual custody uh jensen is taken for further questioning the teenager uh, is taken in for questioning. Everybody yeah, else, I, I, I tell the I tell the police officers and give them the teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the teenagers probably in some very hot water. Um, the there is a airlift for Steel to the nearest hospital. Uh, the rest of you though are sort of stranded a uh, few miles outside of Tokyo. Uh, th there is no room in the gyro to take you back, so unfortunately, for Xavier, Akari, Enzo, and Airbags, you've got to hoof it back. I think I'm okay walking. I would yeah, I think, I've had a, I think I've had enough of buses for one year. It's, how long of a walk is it? Uh, uh, 20Ks? We could just take Maybe. the metro. That sure sounds good. Does anyone have any money for a cab? And uh, uh, that old lady that I talked about earlier. Pants. My, my, my beautiful... Oh, the, old, the old lady? Yep, the, uh, the old one. lady from before uh, kind of comes up to you, Enzo, before she's whisked away and says, Here, dearie, I think you need it more than I do. And hands you a uh, large stack of yen. Thank you, ma'am. Tokyo, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm that is go oh, grab on. clothes out of one of the bags before we leave. Okay, so you're at least semi presentable as you uh, go to the metro. Exactly. Very nice. All right. Well, as I said, this was a shorter little bottle episode thing, but uh, I think that's where we'll call things to a close. Uh, so players, stick around for just a little bit longer. But anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, etc. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you had a good time, and we'll see these guys hopefully next week. Later stream.
Bye. Bye.